In a previous video, I talked about how uh, pulsed ultrasound consists of a series of pulses followed by a listening time. And in this video, I want to look at something called uh, the duty factor. or DF. And this is um, really the idea behind duty factor is looking at the amount of time that the pulse is generated compared to the uh, total amount of time between uh, pulses. So from the um, start of one pulse to the to the start of another pulse. Okay, and this can either be expressed as a as a fraction, so the fraction of time that the ultrasonic transducer is on, or it can be calculated as a percentage, the percentage of time that it's on compared to the total time. Okay, and so uh, the basic formula for this is um, to take, we want to take the ratio of the time the pulse is on to the total time between pulses. Now, the uh, time the pulse is on is called the pulse duration. And the Uh, total length of time is called the pulse repetition period. I showed you how to calculate uh, the pulse repetition period in a previous video and if you remember we generate pulses in the kilohertz range and the pulse repetition period comes out to be typically in the milliseconds and if we remember the pulse duration um, calculation that turns out to come out to be in the microseconds range and so milli, uh, uh, milliseconds and microseconds aren't going to cancel properly so what we have to do is um, put a factor of 1000 in the denominator and what the, uh, that's saying basically if I put in the conversion units is there's a thousand uh, microseconds for every millisecond. So a thousand microseconds per millisecond. So my milliseconds will cancel and I'll have just microseconds left for units. And again this is my uh, duty factor and a lot of times these would be expressed as a percentage so if I wanted to do that I wanted to make it a percent uh, duty factor, I'd also have to um, uh, take this fractional duty factor uh, like this and multiply by 100 percent. Okay. So let's do an example uh, of this type of calculation and the first thing I need to do is to find out um, let's use our 6 megahertz transducer and so the first thing I can do is find out the pulse duration amount of time uh, for the pulse. And Let's just say that each pulse has three uh, full cycle oscillations in it so my um, So in that case, uh, n equals 3. In other words, it's going up and down once, twice, three times before it, it fades out completely. One, two, three. So there's three full wave cycles in the pulse. And um, the other thing I need for that is uh, the period. So um, pulse duration, and this, if it's in microseconds, is equal to 
the number of full cycles times the period, the amount of time for each cycle. Okay, and that's in microseconds. And so the uh, I could also write this if I keep in mind that a, the period in microseconds is equal to one over the frequency in megahertz. I can use this, substitute this into this formula and get a different formula n over uh, the frequency in megahertz and that will make my calculation a little faster and my units when I finish this will be in microseconds. So let's say I have three uh, full cycles divided by in this case uh, six megahertz transducer and so that's um, equal to uh, just one half or 0.5 microseconds. Okay. So that's my pulse duration in microseconds. Next I have a pulse repetition period. So let's say that um, uh, this is probably going to be given in units of um, the pulse repetition usually we have the pulse repetition frequency. Okay, So let's say we have a pulse repetition frequency of 10 kilohertz. Okay, So it's generating it's generating pulses 10,000 times per second. Alright, and uh, so to get the pulse repetition uh, period. Remember period is 1 over frequency so that's um, 1 over uh, the pulse repetition frequency and I said that was 10 kilohertz. 1 over 10 kilohertz. Now in this case uh, it turns out that um, if I give the frequency, I can do a quick conversion here, if I have the frequency in uh, kilohertz uh, and I take one over that, I'll be able to get the uh, period in milliseconds. Okay, And so 1 over 10 is 0.1 milliseconds. So that's my pulse repetition period. Okay, and so now I can uh, compute my duty factor. So let's look at that. The uh, let's give myself a little more room here. Oops. Okay, so the duty factor is equal to the pulse duration in microseconds divided by pulse repetition period in milliseconds times 1,000 okay and uh, plugging in my pulse duration of uh, from up here which was 0.5 microseconds and my pulse repetition period and 0.1 milliseconds and adding my conversion factor again 1000 if you prefer microseconds per millisecond I could write that in right there and so um, I'm going to use a calculator for this I think so let's take a look at that so I have 0.5 divided by 0.1 and also divided by 1000 and so that's equal to point zero zero five so that's point zero zero five and this the units of this are there are no units this is just a fraction
okay? Now I could, uh, if I want to compute a percentage, I just multiply by 100%, so times 100, and that's equal to 0.5. So this would be on um, 0.5, a half a percent of the total time the transducer is on. So typically transducers are only on for about uh, one-tenth of a percent to half a percent of the total time. Um, the, I mean the pulse is generated only for a small fraction of the total time that the transducer is on. Most of the time the transducer spends listening for returning echoes from that initial pulse. Okay, and in this example it came out to be 0.5%.